So uh, we're very happy to have, this is our uh, third uh, short intro workshop series, this time um, presented by Professor Frederick de Gliese. So um, he did his PhD in 2002, at the University of Paris under uh, Fabien Morel. He's currently Director de Recherche at the CNRS and in uh, Col Normale Superior in Lyon. He was also director of the mathematics department there. So I offer my condolences. And uh, <laughs> so he's an expert, expert in uh, motivic categories, their foundations and applications. Uh, his work with uh, Denis Charles Szyzynski, uh, triangulated categories of mixed motives is uh, a standard source and reference for all researchers in the field. And uh, besides that, he has numerous publications and preprints uh, in these foundational aspects of uh, motivic categories. So we're very happy to have him to give uh, this introductory series on Boyabotsky's motivic complexes. Thanks, thanks a lot, Mark. Thank, thanks for the invitation. So uh, uh, I'll give an introduction to the notes, uh, uh, a survey of the notes which are also a survey of, of Ivesky's theory. So it's, it's a, a huge theory. So I, I guess we'll try to see the overall aspects, but of course you're welcome to, to ask questions for certain points if you, if you don't understand or if you don't know some techniques. Okay, so for today, I, ju I just want to start. So I, I'll, I'll start with uh, um, an, 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 introduction, an historical introduction. So let me start with uh, one simple formula that everyone should know from, uh, it's, it's called the earlier product formula. So and it's really like that. So if you go here, um, this is equal to the product of a prime, um, one minus PS. So I said historical introduction. So it's earlier product formula. Um, it's 1734. So for me, it's 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 a it's a one start for all this motivic stuff and this uh, this series. So maybe and now I'll draw a picture. So, so I like this soft, but the, the software the, soft, the only problem is that I have to I I cannot uh, put in a continuous mode, so I have to start new pages each time. Okay. Anyway, so let me let me start to draw my picture. So. Everything is centered around the notion of L function. So in, on the previous uh, page, you had the, the zeta function. So L functions are more or less uh, uh, variants of, uh, of uh, zeta functions where you vary V1 that you have seen on the left-hand side. Uh, um, so we have two directions. So the first direction, let's say, is the function field case. And uh, uh, it starts by the, for me, the veil conjectures. So L function, I, I don't put dates because it's, it's uh, but I should, I should uh, indicate RT and ASE, of course. So it's around the 20s. Veil conjecture, I can put some date, it's 49. Okay. And so it led to two well known developments. First one is the etal. So L addict shift theory, maybe I put shift in shields. And so it's Gotten Dick and his collaborator. So I let me put SGA4, and this is 64, 63, published maybe in 66 or 8. Okay, but there was also an, 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 another notion which has not. Uh, appeared in, uh, in uh, maybe in Deligne's Hodge one paper, but it's the notion of weight. So it's, you can find this in letters from Grotendieck to Say. <clears throat> okay. And so et al shifts uh, uh, have, have, uh, on, uh, have answered the veil conjecture because of the work of Deligne. It, but uh, before the last the, 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 the last last uh, proof 
of the line, Grothendieck introduced the notion of pure motives. So never published anything on this, but this is around the 69 or 70s, when there were Kleiman and uh, several, several papers on this. <clears throat> okay, so this is already uh, uh, points, and of course the weights are also a motivation for pure motives. Now let's turn to the other, other aspect of uh, L functions, which is the number field case fields. So here I should put, maybe I should have put that before, the so-called class number formula, which is also uh, huge historical motivation from Dirichlet. There were several versions, but in serious time, 19th century. Okay, so there were several work on special values, but on, on, uh, on, on L functions and, and uh, after L class number formula, but um, what, which the, the thing I want to say is that there was this important work by Lichtenbaum, 73, on special values of L functions. functions. Okay, and here enter into play another the actor in this thing, so is K theory. So Lichtenbaum used uh, first et al cohomology to formulate some conjectures and then K theory. So there, there, there are many people here, many, many works here that contribute to this, contribute to this, but uh, I don't put everything. So of course there is Borel and so on, but okay. And uh, also, last thing that I should add here is the notion of the theory of perverse sheaves. This is Berenson, Bernstein, and the Ligne, and stated to asterisk 100. Okay. And here, maybe I should put another important notion that of T structure. Okay, now I finished my drawing because all, all ah, no, I've, I've forgot something. Before the notion of pure motives, there was a, a, a physics of the line. So it's a notion of mixed fudge structure. So it was before, just before the pure motives, even if it's well. Or so and it derives from the notion of weights. It's in characteristic zero. So all these perverse sheaves come from etal etal eladic sheaves. Okay, and all these notions have given my last thing, my last it item, which is the Bellinson conjectures. And Boom also gave some, some, some conjectures like that afterwards. So this is around the 84, 86, maybe it's in height pairing. Uh, so Bellinson conjecture the existence of a, of a new category that we will describe actually now. I mean, not exactly the, uh, which come, which, which enlarge motives and incorporate all these aspects here. Okay, maybe last, uh, last item. So what, what today, and what's about the what the, the, the summer school is about is private uh, skis for motopy theory and maybe for today just multi complexes which are supposed to answer the Bainson conjecture and they are quite successful. So first first work of the ski was his PhD thesis in Princeton in 94. Okay and Last thing, maybe I want to advert the, it's, it's a kind of extra, I want to advert the, the talk of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, um, of Matthew, so there is some development here, so maybe I should add, so it's, it's aside, it's, it, today it will not be about this, so there is a notion of periodic L function, which are roughly L functions, but with a coefficient in ZP or, or rings like that, and here it 
apparently gives some development about a notion of piadic motives, or I don't know if it's a good uh, name for that. And but this this will probably be so. This this uh, there's a question mark here. Okay. No questions so far. So we have all the the the, 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 the aspects that I want to uh, to 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 state here. So the the model for Velvetsky's theory is uh, the, the theory of etal etal sheaves or etal torsion sheaves. Okay. And okay. So uh, uh, there are maybe I should I should give you a plan. So my first, I will first uh, uh, give reference for uh, the notion of sheaves with transfers of vivaces, which are maybe I should add my homotopy, which is the analog of uh, which is modeled on a theory of etal etal sheaves, etal torsion sheaves. Then I will go into the case of Perfect field case and main theorem, perfect field. And main theorem of the theory. And lastly, we will go into the definition of multi complexes. Okay. So my convention for today is that so I, I also wanted to, to tell you about uh, the, the, the notion of a uh, of six functors formalism. So I will work over some base scheme. So we'll fix, we'll fix S, uh, uh, a regular notarian, maybe finite dimension also for the cool dimension scheme. Okay, so either you can take a smooth scheme over a field or the spectrum of a regular scheme. So otherwise it means that all the local ring are regular. So it's supposed to incorporate uh, what, what you get when you have a curve over, an, over a number field and then you can, you lift it say over spec Z. And usually you can find a, a model which is regular, not, not smooth or spec Z, but regular. Okay. Okay, okay so now we, we start with the notion of, of shifts with transfer. So there are three differences, three differences with respect to etal sheaves of SGA4. So the first one is that sheaves admit transfers. And so here I will use the notion of algebraic cycles and finite correspondences, which we will see in a, some, in a minute. So of course, it's, it's, uh, this, this uh, notion of transfers is very linked with the notion of motives. So uh, I, I will not uh, review the theory of two motives, but it's based on the notion of uh, algebraic cycles and correspondences. Okay, the second uh, difference is that we, we will use the big smooth Misnevich site for my sheaves. So I'll give, uh, I will give definitions. And the third difference is that it's very unknown, I think now, is that we use the A1 homotopy relation. And this allows to incorporate uh, algebraic topology uh, techniques into this, this theory. But you will, you will also see in uh, uh, Kirsten. Okay, so let me start with a notion of, of uh, finite correspondences. <clears throat> So the idea 
goes back at least to Italian geometers. So they remark that uh, um, the notion of morphism of algebraic varieties is a bit too restrictive. And so if, if, uh, if, if they wanted to get some more, more flexibility, and so they started to use uh, algebraic correspondences. So that's uh, what Dovesky has, has done. So all this theory, of course, is due to Dovesky, all the theory that I will present. So let me give a definition. So now X and Y are smooth schemes. And that smooth schemes separated of finite type. Smooth separated of finite type over my regular scheme S. Okay. And a correspondent, a finite correspondent is alpha. Finite correspondence is correspondence from x to y is an algebraic cycle. Sum. So this is a sum, a finite sum, one to n, say, of uh, a formal sum of reducible scheme. So where z i inside x cross s y is closed integral as a scheme and uh, a projection of z i to x is finite and subjective over some connected component. Uh, yeah, so uh, S is regular, so an X, uh, X is smooth over S, so X is also regular. And a regular scheme is a disjoint union of its irreducible components, which are all connected components. Okay. So it's an algebraic cycle inside X cross S, Y, uh, and, 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 but with a restriction that, um, so we also say that the support of alpha over X is finite and equidimension. Okay. So the good point with this notion of finite correspondence is that you can you can um, turn to turn them into homomorphisms. So this means that you can compose composition. Uh, sorry, maybe I should have add a notation. So we say you did not see S, X, Y, the set of finite correspondences, which is actually an abelian group of finite correspondences from X to Y over S. Okay, so now suppose we have correspondences from X to Y and beta from Y to Z. Uh, uh, so we want to, to compose them. Uh, then we can, uh, let me, I write X, Y for X crosses Y, maybe I should have put So on. So if you have never seen that, this is classical uh, in the in the theory of algebraic cycles. So what we do is that we consider the product of all three smooth schemes like this, and we have three projection: one from x y, x c, and y z. P, Q, R, like this. Okay, so P, Q, and R are smooth morphisms. And uh, we can always define the pullback of alpha, P, upper star, alpha, and Q, upper star, beta, are well defined uh, uh, cycles, algebraic cycles. 
in the product. Actually, for it's it's uh, yeah, it's easy. You just take so if assume that alpha is a sum of, of zi. Uh, yeah, okay. So you just take this product here. And X, Y, Z. Okay, so the pullback is easy to define here because the, my, my, my schemes are smooth. Okay, and then it happens that uh, uh, the cycles, these two cycles intersects, intersect properly in X, Y, Z. So it means that using Serstor formula, but there is also, you could use a Samuel formula if you want, but that's not, but this is the correct way to do it. You can intersect them and obtain some cycle. It's another algebraic cycle, mm, a product, okay. And now, so maybe I should picture this. We add something like this. And in fact, the intersection of, of uh, considered here is something like the fiber product. So if alpha and, and beta were the class of some uh, irreducible closed subscheme, it will just be the fiber product here. So it means that what you, you deduce from this, let's call this gamma. You deduce from this that the support of gamma, because it's a projection here, is a finite and equidimensional. Okay. And now, so if you take this equal t, so it means that you can, if you look at the projection R restricted to t, it induces a map from R to, from T to R of T, which is well defined and which is finite. Let go of this H. And then you can define the, the push forward of cycle H star H star gamma, which we, which is well defined also. Okay, and now this is what we call beta composed with alpha. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so sorry, I've missed some questions, but I'll see. Okay, so a good point is that uh, uh, you, can, you can check associativity. And also there is a neutral element. And so let me give examples. So I should have done, done that before of finite correspondence. If you have a morphism of smooth scheme, X from Y, you can look at its graph of F. So it's obtained. So you take, uh, sorry, I should. Y cross S Y. Oh uh, no. This. So you always have a diagonal map. So because Y is separated over S, this is a closed immersion. And here you can look at X cross S Y. You look at the map F cross identity, and the graph is just for pullback. Then the graph is a closed subscheme in X cross S Y, and you can check easily that graph. You can associate a cycle. Just take the sum of the connected component or X, and it's actually a, fi uh, a finite correspondence. You can see because the, the, the actually the projection from gamma F to X is an isomorphism. So, so this I will just denote it F like that. So the neutral element is just. Uh, the correspondence identity of X. Okay, but I have another example of a, an in, another interesting example of finite correspondence. If now you assume that F is finite, 
and say equidimensional. So it, it means that every, any uh, uh, connected component of X dominates a connected component of Y. So it's, it's, not, it's not much equidimensional here. Then if you look at the graph of F uh, inside X cross S Y, you can decide, you can switch the, you can switch the, the, the factors of this, of this scheme here. And, uh, and then let me write epsilon star gamma F for a cycle in Y cross S X. Then the projection from gamma F to Y is just uh, uh, the morphism F itself. So it's also finite equidimensional. And this gives you the finite correspondence, but this time from Y to X. And this I denote T of F and it's called the transpose of F. Okay. okay. So what, can, what you can check out of all of this, so that you have defined a, a, a composition product on, on finite correspondences with a good neutral element, and you have all this. So maybe I should put it, give a definition here. So you have actually defined a, a category, a category of smooth correspondences over S. Whose objects are smooth S schemes and morphisms or finite S correspondences. Okay. Okay, maybe for I should denote this gamma of F. And what you can check also, so there, there are things to check here. What you can check also is that, that the, the graph functor defines uh, uh, the graph, uh, uh, the graph that I defined in the previous example defines a functor, which is the identity on objects and maps a morphism to this graph. Okay, so so we have actually enlarged, uh, and, and of course this map gamma is uh, faithful, it's not full. And so we have enlarged the category of, of smooth schemes, so we have added morphisms. Okay. So see if there are answers, thanks, thanks for, sorry. Uh, before going further, there are, we can you know, we can see that there are uh, further operations on on these categories of smooth correspondences SM core. So let me take F from T to S any any morphism of scheme of regular schemes. Then I can define a pullback functor from core, SM core T. So when I have a smooth scheme over S, I just take its pullback here. And when, I'm, uh, when I have a finite correspondence, so I have a map, so let me write F, X, Y, it will be map obtained by pullback. Okay, so then I can define this star of alpha because it's, it will just be a, an exterior product of cycle. Okay, so it's a base change. Okay. And you can check this in this category, xt. Okay. 
but also if you have if now you take p from t to s a smooth uh, uh, morphism so when i say smooth it will always mean smooth separate of finite type i can define so this is uh, f upper star i can define another functor which in some sense forget the base so if i have a smooth scheme so maybe i should write this yt Uh, I can just see why as a smooth scheme over S just by, by composing with um, F here. And if I have some correspondence, maybe beta and C T Y Y prime. Uh, now, if I do that, what I have is that Y cross S Y prime is closed Oh, sorry, it's the other way. And so I can associate to beta just via the, the direct image, and you can check that this defines the correspondence form y or y prime. Okay, so I have a functor which I will denote p sharp and which forget the, ba the base. Uh, to define, sorry, maybe the, yeah, to define this f upper star of alpha, you, you need to, to use uh, uh, intersection theory, sorry, but it works because we are dealing with finite correspondence. Okay, so we have base change, we have forget the base, and there is another, another, there is a monoidal structure. Same core S. So if you have on objects, if you have x s over s and y over s, uh, you just put, it's just the Cartesian product because it's a smooth scheme. And if you have finite correspondence, alpha x, x prime say, and beta y to y prime. Now, now this time you consider the exterior product and gives you a correspondence from x, x prime, y prime, okay. So you can check that you have in this way a, 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 model, a monoidal structure on SM core S. So this category is good where there are some functors and, and it's additive, but it's not, uh, it's not enough to do well. You can do some some uh, homological algebra, but we we, we won't uh, we won't do it today. Uh, uh, instead, we we now go to to an, the notion of uh, of uh, sheaves and transfers. So to simplify the matter, so this category is just additive. It's it's not good a priori to to do homological algebra. So we just we will just enlarge it as usual. You should be familiar with this procedure. So we consider pre-sheaves on this category. So uh, uh, pre sheaf with transfers is just a, 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 a contravariant functor, so on core S. So I put a, a up to, to say contravariant, which goes to the category of abelian groups. And we add the, 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 the property that it's additive. With respect to the additive structure on SM core S. Okay, so it's, it's just the standard, uh, uh, the standard way to enlarge a category and we will get a, a, with a, na a notion of natural transformation, this, this becomes a category. And this category here has the advantage to be abelian. And actually, even it's 
Groten Dikavillion complete and co-complete. So meaning it admits limits, co-limits, and Groten Dikavillion, it implies that uh, it admits injective resolution, for example. So it's good to do uh, homological algebra and, and we still have a Yoneda embedding which here is the following. So we get a canonical functor which to a smooth scheme here we associate just the pre-sheaf represented by X pre-sheaf with transfers and this is denoted Z S T R of X. Okay. Okay, but before now, the, the thing is that we have good example of shifts with transfers. Example. So we have all of the representable pre shifts also. But uh, uh, the first one, if if you take a shift GM, so restricted to smooth scheme, so to x over s smooth, it associates just the set of the, 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 the invertible global function on x, then gm is a pre sheaf with transfers. So I let that for maybe exercises or I, I gave references in my, in my notes. Second example, which is even more interesting so i've restricted to a field here i'm, I'm not sure it's it's uh, necessary but uh, if a is an abelian variety over k then a uh, uh, shift which i will denote by a underline which to x over k maps to just the morphism of schemes next to a is actually a pre-shift with transfers actually it works uh, for any commutative group scheme even group schemes actually and it works also for semi abelian variety just for those who knows, semi-abelian varieties are uh, an extension of torus by abelian varieties. Okay, so these are important uh, 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 particular cases of precedent transfers. And we have a, a last, uh, last example, if H star is a good cohomology theory, Say, for example, you take Betty Komoji or Etal Komoji or Doram Komoji. Then, uh, if you take S scheme, so it can be S over K, it can be smooth, or just regular if it's, uh, or just regular if you use uh, Eladic Etal Komoji. G L invertible on S. Uh, then the, the, the pre sheaf which to X over S smooth associates a cohomology in one degree N X is a pre sheaf with transfers. What we use here when I say good cohomology, you want to have cycle class map. Okay, so we have concrete example given by this geometric example and also uh, uh, cohomology theories, which gives uh, many examples. Okay. So what we have done here is we, uh, we have enlarged a category of smooth schemes over S into this big abelian category, but now we want to incorporate the, 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 the other example, the other ingredient, which is the Nisnevich topology. So we have seen that in the talk of Philip, but I, I will just recall 
the Nisnevich topology. So Nisnevich topology is uh, a topology on, say, SMS, whose covers are given by morphism, uh, sorry, in SMS such that for any point in X, there exists a point uh, Y in W such that oops, P such that P of Y equal to X and the, resi the residue field extension cap of X is uh, trivial meaning it's an isomorphism. Kappa of X is isomorphic to kappa of Y. So this was also called, and also, sorry, such that P is eta. So first P is etal and surjective. So this is an etal cover, but we add this condition, which is also called, uh, which was called completely composed by, Nis by Nisnevich, and, and uh, uh, which means that which, which, which is a stronger condition. And so the Nisnevich topology will be different from the Vietal topology. Of course, a Zariski cover will be a particular case of a Nisnevich cover, but you have, uh, 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 you have more co Nisnevich cover than Zariski cover. Okay, so Nisnevich is be between Etal and Zariski. Okay, so maybe also I should say a word so about the condition of being a shift. And for this, I will, in introduce what Morel and Vevesky call Nisnevich distinguished square, Nisnevich. The definition. So a Nisnevich distinguished square in say SM of S, but it works in any, for any scheme is uh, a square of a form U X W J P such that J is an open immersion, P is etal, and if you put X of a closed reduced subscheme in X. Uh, which is a complement of U, then P induces uh, an isomorphism from P minus one Z. I'm not sure I will use this, uh, let's call this T, I will use this, uh, this notion, but I, I, I like to use also the notion of closed pair. So we say XZ is a closed pair. When X is a smooth scheme and Z is just a closed subscheme, we say that the map P from E to T, X to Z is uh, uh, an excessive morphism. of closed pairs. So that's, uh, it's useful to formulate some uh, of, of the properties, okay? Okay, so I, I, I let, uh, I don't look at the question, but you can interrupt me if you. I'll, okay. I'll let you know, we're, we're having, we're fine. You just keep going. Good. Good. So the lemma due to Morel and Vyvesky is following. So I will assume that you are familiar with the notion of shift. So when you have covers, you have a quartan topology, and then you have a notion of associated shifts. But if you, you are not familiar, you can just use the lemma that I will state as a definition. So let's take F from SMS up to or actually you can also take uh, uh, just uh, sets if you want. And then F is an Isnevich sheaf. sheaf if and only if uh, uh, 
let's call this for any okay, for any Niznevich. I forgot this distinguished square. Call, call it delta v image by f, which is another square, either of abelian groups or, or, or sets, is co Cartesian. Okay. So you can take this, this second property as a definition of Nisnevich. So this is also an exercise in, so I don't know. So. Maybe I, I'll try to go faster because otherwise I, I won't have time to finish. Okay, so that's for the recall on Niznevich topology. Now we want to incorporate this, this notion of topology into our, our uh, uh, pre-shifts with transfers. So we will say that if we take F a pre-shift with transfer of S, we'll say that F is a sheaf. I should say Niznevich, but in, in all this talk, it will always be Niznevich topology. It's a Niznevich sheaf with transfers. If when you compose F with gamma, so let's recall, we had this graph functor, now we have F, so let me write up, up, everywhere, then this is a Niznevich sheaf. In the, in the above sense. Okay. And sometimes it's denoted gamma or stuff. F. Okay, so we, we just look only at the objects or pre-shifts with transfers such that uh, uh, <clears throat> When you restrict to smooth schemes, you really have a, a shift. Um, now it's better for cohomological reasons. So I should have said that uh, uh, before, but why transfers? Because if you take f from y to x, a finite equidimensional or subjective, you can think just morphism. Then you can, and you have F either pre shift or shift with transfers of F. Then you can apply F to the transpose of F. And this will give you a map in the wrong direction F, F1, F of X. And this is usually connected by F lower star. And these are called transfers or sometimes Gizin maps, Junker maps, and so on. Besides, these transfers are, have good properties, but I won't say them here. Okay, so maybe before going into next next step, I, I just want to add a remark about this notion of big site. So what 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 can you how can you interpret this notion of big site? So of course. Uh, if x, let's take x, a smooth scheme over s, then you still have the small Nisnevich site, like for et al topology, it's, it is made by just, uh, uh, you look at only the, so it's a category of scheme, which are v over x, which are just et al over x, okay? So, uh, and then you endow it with the Nisnevich topology. And you have a notion of sheaf on Xnis. Okay. Now, when you look at F, a sheaf with transfers, so over S, it's in particular a sheaf over SMS. So it means that uh, uh, you can look at the restriction of F to the category Xnis and call this Fx. So uh, Oh, because you have a, a shift on the big side, so you uh, automatically obtain maps. So for any morphism y to x in SMS, you automatically obtain maps. So it goes from f, 
of a star f of x of x to f of y f y. And this is a morphism, a natural transformation of sheaves on the small side y is. Here you have you have used this uh, this operation that I've not defined, which is a pullback for sheaves, but it's it, it works like for size key sheaves. Okay, and this map here to f is 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 a structural map, so a sheaf on S and S corresponds to the data of sheaves for all S and S which are on, on, on this small site, plus this transition map. To F, which are not isomorphisms. Actually, uh, 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 when you have, for example, you have an inclusion, you can look at sheaves on S -NIS for the Nisnevis topology, and it's included in the category of sheaves on SMS plus Nisnevis topology. And it goes to, you associate to F, just the, 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 the sequence of sheaves which are obtained by pullback F star of F. Smooth, okay. So, uh, uh, all this is just for saying that sheaves on the big side. So we say big side because uh, uh, sheaves on this on this side are much bigger than sheaves on the small side. So they are given by collection of sheaves on the small side and transition map, which are not isomorphisms. Okay. So this is completely linked. So for those who knows to the notion of crystals, crystals, and so on, it's just for saying why. Okay. But anyway, uh, we can we can work with this uh, this notion of sheaves. <clears throat> so let me add another construction. So, of course, all these these notion of sheaves and and, and so on comes from SGA four and the very abstract uh, topos theory. And, but uh, there are, as, as you have said, there are several examples advantage to work with pre sheaves and sheaves. So we will see in a minute that sheaves with transfers is also a category of an abelian category, for example. But also you you have uh, more operation on this. So remember, on this category S M core of S, we add three operation F upper star base change, forget the base and some tensor structure maybe. A little bit. Then, then all these operations can be extended to sheaves. So, suppose, for example, let's take the first one. You have a map of regular schemes from T to S, and you have a sheaf with transfers over S. Then you can you can just look at F composed with this pullback map F upper stars. So, and then goes to a billion. So X, as I said, we add X crosses T, and then we just apply F. So this is usually called the direct image. Okay, and this you should, uh, you should, uh, if you have seen the ice sheet, this is a usual definition. And, and you can see immediately that if F is a Nisnevich sheaves, then this F lower star F is a Nisnevich sheaves, just because Nisnevich covers are stable by pullback. Okay. And here we have a, a, another information. This, this direct image admits transfers also. So we have a functor. Uh, I will write this in V uh, from. Sorry, so F was a shift with transfers over T. Okay. Um, we have an F lower star map like that. And when you have such a functor, you can check that formally it admits a right adjoint, a left adjoint, sorry.
So you should you should be used uh, to these kinds of of f upper star. And by the way, uh, <coughs> this this f upper star is is uh, characterized by the following property. I happen to realize that I have forgotten example of shift Lewis transfers. F purple star of C transfer S X is equal to C transfer S of X cross S. So let me add an example that I should have done before of shifts with transfers. So as I said over S, if X over S is smooth, we add this pre-shift with transfer, which is just represented by X. And you can check it is an, an etal shift. It is a Nisnevit shift. So by, with transfers, okay, when restricted to smooth schemes. Actually, it's even an etal shift. There are other examples. All the one that I've given, so GM, um, A underline, so this is a shift with transfers over S, and this I restricted to, to fields where R is just an abelian varieties or even a semi-abelian variety. Okay. <clears throat> so actually, yeah. So as I said before, this functor F upper star uh, is defined formally a priori. And it maps a shift with, it's a best change functor for shifts. So it takes a shift with transfers over S and it gives you a shift with transfers over T. And it's uniquely characterized by this, this property. And the fact that F, as F upper star is a left joint, sorry. I put it on the left. Uh, F, F upper star is a left joint. So it commutes formally with colimits and, and then using formal stuff, you can check this, this property. Okay, so I had my example of sheaves and now I had over example, if P from T to S is smooth, what you get is that you can, you can what you, you can check is that if F is a shift with transfers over T, then when you compute P upper star of F, defined in the previous black ball, what you obtain is just the composition of F with this uh, functor P sharp, which forget the base. Okay. And actually, so if you have followed what I have done with the base chain functor, so we have this functor P upper star, which is uh, obtained by, by composing with P sharp, and it admits a left adjoint P sharp, such that P sharp is uh, defined, characterized by the property that maps this shift with transfers to S, Y, X, S, and uh, Y is T, S. And there is power transfers and so. Last thing, and that is that so this was the second operation. And then third, you can define a tensor product with transfers on this category of shifts with transfers, such that Z transfer X tensor. Is just given by X. Y and uh, uh, V 
this is actually this is a closed symmetric monoidal structure. So again, you have an adjoint from tor, which is the internal arm. Okay, so just remark that what we, we have defined exactly six functors, which organize in a pair of adjoint functors. Okay, so that was for the formal part of shift theory on Hauer. So, okay, <laughs> I'm definitely late. So the last important property of, uh, of uh, that Vyvesky introduces is the so-called A1 invariance. <clears throat> and uh, uh, for sheaves, so the definition is very easy. So you take a sheaf, or it works also for pre-sheaves with transfers. But take just take a sheaf, and you say that F is let's say A1 invariant if uh, for any smooth scheme X over S, the map induced by the projection of the affine line X to F A1 of X is an isomorphism. Okay, so very simple. So let me uh, uh, remark some something. So this means so this means actually that uh, uh, F depends only on A one homotopy classes of finite correspondences. So what do I mean by that? So if I have alpha beta finite correspondences from X to Y, I can say that alpha is A one homotopic or to beta if there exists. H, a finite correspondence from A1 cross X to Y, such that as in topology, when you compose H with the zero section of A1 of X, you obtain alpha, and when you compose with a unit section, you obtain beta. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit because this is not a transitive relation, but you can you can take the, the induced transitive relation and then you get an equivalence relation and, and then A1 is an equivalence relation on morphisms of this category, SM called S. It's compatible, you can check it's compatible with composition, this is formal, and then you get a, a homotopy category by SM core S, whose morphisms are just the uh, class, the homotopy classes of correspondences from X to Y. Okay, and if F is a, F is a one invariant, more or less is equivalent to say that F factors through this homotopy category by SM core S. So as a functor like this. Okay. So we will, this is how we will able to incorporate algebraic topology techniques uh, to in this framework. So before going to the main theorem, I just give examples. So that you can check by yourself. GM is A1 invariant. Also A underline is A1 invariant. So as shift with transfers over K, where A is a semi abelian variety, not a group. Okay, so again, this is uh, an, an exercise. Okay, so maybe now I should formulate uh, the first theorem which, which allows uh, Vygotsky to, to make his, to, to work with finite correspondences up to homotopy. So maybe I recall to you the relative Picard group. So 
So if x z is a closed pair, which means so a scheme and a closed subscheme, the, the relative Picard group of this pair is made by a couple of pairs of L phi, where L is an invertible sheaf on X and phi is from LZ to OZ is a an isomorphism, so it's a trivialization, a given trivialization of L of Z. And you look at this up to isomorphism. Okay. Uh, okay, so I should take a, a main theorem that uh, I'll be using, which is, so maybe I should say it's due to Suslin and Voivodsky. Even more. Okay, is the following. Take S, so I have to restrict to S uh, an affine regular scheme. Uh, I have to take C or S a curve, a smooth curve, smooth affine curve, uh, which admits the so called good compactification such that so there exists. C bar S proper normal um, C is open in C bar and you also require that the complement C bar minus C which denoted by C infinity uh, is non-empty <laughs> and well, of course uh, C is a, is a fine so of course, but it admits an affine open neighborhood in C bar. Okay. This is called a good compactification. And when you have that, uh, you have that for all X of S smooth affine. Maybe I, I've put too much affine scheme here, but it's not uh, important. Then you can compute the morphism uh, the correspondences up to homotopy from X to C and it's isomorphic to the Picard group of X cross S C bar uh, relative to this closed subscheme. Okay. So, well, the idea to prove this theorem is uh, if you look at, uh, at the finite correspondences from X to C, it's actually a, a Cartier, it's a Cartier divi veil divisor in X process C. So it's called dimension one because uh, uh, everything, because C bar was normal. You can see it as a, a divisor in X cross C bar. Now this scheme is normal, so it, it corresponds to a, a line bundle. So, and you can see that there is a trivialization. So, and then you should prove that it's an isomorphism. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, so I should uh, I should have guessed that. Uh... <clears throat> so application of this uh, of this theorem. Now I go to the second part. <laughs> Certainly, I should use my next uh, my next talk to finish this talk. Okay. Uh, uh, in this second part, I will restrict now to the case of S is the spectrum of K where K is a field. So I don't put perfect now because it's not always used, use, but it's used in the main theorem. So the first theorem is the following. So because of, of, of a preceding theorem, you get the following lemma, which is uh, take any open immersion, you X, in the category of smooth schemes over K, then there exists a Zariski cover P and a finite correspondence alpha here. So C K 
KW search that with diagram commutes, commutes, commutes up to homotopy. So in uh, uh, SM core. Okay. okay. So uh, this lemma set tells you that locally for the Zariski topology, uh, open immersions uh, and its splittings uh, when you when you have added these correspondences. And the immediate corollary is that if F is a shift wave transfers over K, which is A1 invariant, then the map from X to FU is a split monomorphism. So this is very strange for shifts. <laughs> But it, it already tells you that, so I, I, I told you that uh, shifts on the big side were big objects. And uh, you see that the virtue of the A1 invariance is to make them smaller because it, it adds this, this uh, huge restriction here. You can reformulate this, this, this uh, statement like this. So if X is a smooth scheme over K, then you can go from F of X to say a product product or sum, it's the same thing, of the generic point of F evaluated at the function field. So uh, you have put F cap of X is just the limit of open neighborhood from F of U, okay. And this is just the set of generic points. Points. And what we have obtained is that this is a monomorphism. Okay, so f of x injects in the product of f evaluated that uh, this function field here. So this means, so roughly, sp uh, roughly speaking, it means that fiber functors for. This homotopy L1 invariant chief with transfers are function fields. Here, if E of K is a function field, it means that E is function field of any Z, zero K smooth. Then you define F of E by the formula above. Where z is replaced, so, sorry, just x. Then uh, from f e is a conservative family. Of functors, if you consider all for all function fields. Is that clear? I'm, I'm, I'm so because I'm lacking of time, maybe I'm not so clear. Okay, so maybe now it's time to give a name uh, definition. Following Vygotsky, we denote that A by H I T R of K, a category of A1 invariant sheaves with transfers. Okay, so we have just seen that uh, they have this huge restriction. So open immersion must induce uh, uh, monomorphisms. Uh, what we can show more or less formally, it's not so easy, is that H I T of K is an abelian category. And actually, so of course you can always forget that you are homotopy invariant and you go into this category. So this category is also a billion and you can show that there exists a functor H0, which turns you into a homotopy invariant shift wave transfer. Okay. 
So, and, and as I said, maybe the more interesting thing that you have is that if you take a billion varieties over K, there is a fully faithful embedding into this category of homotopy invariant shears with transfers. So maybe you, you could think with that that this category HIT of K is, uh, is of motivic origin because the billion varieties are the first example of motifs. H0 is, yes, the left join to, <coughs> to the, 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 the inclusion. Okay, so, so maybe for tomorrow, I, so for today, I will just uh, uh, go into the, the category of shifts with transfers, homotopy invariant shifts with transfers, and I, I reserve the motivic complex for tomorrow. Okay, so I have a second theorem for homotopy shifts with transfers to, to state, and this uses a very, uh, very famous construction of a, a minus one construction. So it's very simple, the definition. If F is a homotopy and shift with transfers over K, you define F minus one of X as a kernel of a map induced from F the evaluated at GM cross X going to F of X. And what is this map? It's just look at the unit section of GM of, of X and you take its inverse image. So this map S1 uh, is a monomorphism. So this one, uh, S1 upper star is an epimorphism and you can, you can check readily that F minus one is actually uh, homotopy invariant sheaves with transfers. Okay. So I have not much time to mention that, but what you can check is that F minus one is the internal arm computed in the category of shifts with transfers of GM F. Okay. So for those who it's, it's uh, maybe for in fancy terms, it means that it's a GM loop space of F. So, Okay, maybe another example, if you compare that, you can do it by yourself. If you take GM and you apply the minus one construction, then it just gives the constant shift, which is actually a constant shift, constant Miznevich shift. A third example that you can also check by yourself is that if you take an abelian A, now A is a billion variety, variety, and A minus one is just zero. Okay, so before stating the main theorem, I, I just want to, to introduce this theorem, which is not, it's a kind of devisage theorem, or it could be a lemma of Ivetsky. So it's, it's actually a lemma for the main theorem. And it tells you uh, now K is a perfect field. Um, well, okay, maybe maybe not necessary actually here. So I just take Y from Z to X, uh, close immersion. Of a smooth divisor. And of course, X over K is smooth. And I put U, I let U be the complement, and I look at the, the open immersion. Then uh, I always have this map that I uh, have defined by adjunction. I get a map from F restricted to the, the Zaisky site. Remember, so this is F restricted to X, Nisnevi site, sorry. And I can always go to J lower star F of U. 
So this is the map, uh, which is a join from the, the structural map of F seen as a sheaf on the big side. Uh, we have seen by the, the lemma on, on, uh, on, uh, and the fact that uh, the J upper star is always a monomorphism of, of sheaves. So we obtain that this map is a monomorphism. And actually, uh, Vyvesky compute the co-kernel and it is y low star f minus one, and then you restrict to z. So this is an exact sequence of sheaves on the small set x is. Okay. Uh, so I have no time to to prove this theorem, but again, it, it really uses uh, uh, the existence of correspondences and the main theorem of Susan Wojewski I've given you to be able, and also you use excision to, to come back to a simple situation. Okay, maybe I give you a, a, a geometric interpretation of this. Or cohomological, sorry, interpretation in terms of cohomology with supports, you can see that it means it implies with the notation of, uh, of the preceding theorem that if you compute the cohomology, the Nisnevich cohomology of X with support in Z, cohomology with support, then it's actually equivalent to H zero of Z F minus one. Okay, so this Davis Ash theorem is a kind of purity theorem. Okay, so maybe now it's time to to state the main theorem of Wojewski. So I put V, but of course everything is due to Wojewski here. <clears throat> So it says that now K is really a perfect field. This is strictly necessary, I think. And you take F uh, homotopy invariant shift with transfers, okay. Then you can study its cohomology. And uh, the assertion is that for all smooth scheme of a K, the cohomology of F, the Nisnevich cohomology is homotopy invariant. So in other words, N, the cohomology of XF is an isomorphism. So it's always this image cohomology. Okay, so as I said, it's the main, main theorem of, of the theory. It has also uh, motivated uh, several work in A1 homotopy afterwards, not, notably by Morel, also when you consider different kind of transfers. Uh, I, I won't be able to give a proof now, in, except, in, except even because it's only five minutes, I have only five minutes left. But uh, maybe I just say that uh, this theorem uses the devisage that I've started, which, which allows you to, to consider the case n equal one, the case n equal one first, then you use induction. And the key step, the key point, is to prove that uh, for any open immersion, j, then r n j lower star f is zero for n strictly positive. <clears throat> so uh, the, the proof, uh, uh, use induction on N and prove both property first, cohomology, first there is this isomorphism on cohomology and you have also this vanishing. And when you have this vanishing, it allows to generalize this, uh, this purity property to higher degrees. Okay. So, as I said, an important corollary of this theorem is the so-called purity property. So now you take uh, C inside X spoof, but of co-dimension, if I take C, then F as above, okay. 
then in this Nivichko emoji with support is isomorphic to n minus c. Comology of c, but degree n minus c. And with coefficient in f minus c. Okay, the proof of this corollary, again, it's for c equal one, as I said, it's it's a corollary of a proof and of a devisage theorem, and then you use induction on C to get the general case. Maybe I can reformulate this, this property as follows. Uh, take any point x in x of co-dimension, now I take n. Then you can use the so-called komoji, the local komoji of f. So this is spec O x x. So I'm just using that you can. So x localized at x is not smooth. It's not a finite type of a k, but you can uh, uh, extend f and komoji to to these kinds of schemes. Now x itself is a, is a close point of this scheme and uh, as a byproduct of this corollary, what you get at is that this is zero if n is different from c and this is f minus, uh, well, no, sorry, so I should have taken i, i different from n, sorry. And this is f minus n evaluated at the residue field. So this is a function field actually if i equal n. Okay, and so for those who know this, this, this property is, is actually stronger uh, than, than, the, than the, the property for the shift f seen as a shift, for example, on XR to be a, a cohen macaulay So now maybe I, I, I state another corollary, which is almost a theorem. So it's called the Gersten resolution. So first way to say that, so for all x smooth over k, when you look at the shift x, f, f, uh, at the shift f restricted to x, x nis or x r, it is Cohen macaulay in the sense of uh, Archand residues and dualities. And then it implies that uh, it admits a Gerson resolution, a cousin resolution. So we have a cousin complex, which is a C star XF, um, which has a following form. It's in degree n, it's the sum of the point of co dimension n of F minus n X, like this. Minus one, sorry. No, oh, and plus one. Increase co dimension. Okay. So it's called the cosine complex of Fx, but it's also the Gersten complex of a full shift f. The theorem is that the cohomology Niznevich of x f is the same as the cohomology of this complex. Okay, and here you can actually put Zariski or Niznevich. Ah, okay, so uh, maybe I, I use a few seconds more. So just to pose an exercise, so you can consider the case of GM, write the cousin complex for GM. I'm sure what you get. And maybe for Matthew Stoke, I think, so I had to, to define uh, the hyatro groups, so I won't do that, but, but at least I can, I can state another theorem which is linked with all this. So 
you can consider GM and a tensor product n time. So let me write this as nt. So this is tensor product in HITR. So this tensor product is induced by the tensor product on Chivrus transforms. Okay. Uh, and the main theorem is that if you evaluate SNT at a function field, then it's actually isomorphic to Kn, to the Milner K theory, degree N of, e, of, uh, of a field E. So this theorem is uh, due, due to Susan Wojewski. And what you get is that if you write the Gaston resolution, again, an exercise for this, uh, this particular sheet, S and T, what you will get is that the cohomology in degree N is Nevich of X with coefficient in this sheaf is isomorphic to, for those who know the Chagu of X in co-dimension N. And in fact, what, you, what we get is that, so I, I'll add new names, sorry for this. SNT is isomorphic to the so-called unramified Milner K theory. This formula is some version of blocks form. Okay, so I think I'll stop there and I'll continue uh, either this evening or tomorrow for the category for the motivic complex case. Oh, thanks very much. Are there any questions, comments? A lively discussion in the chat, so I'm sure lots of people have ah. questions. No, no, no. We answered all the questions in the chat. Good. We took care Thanks. Thanks. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. <laughs>